basically, we considered the issue of whether regulations in the regulatory environment could incentivize uh, innovation. And I basically put it uh, to the audience that although a regulator cannot create innovation by fiat, they still can create an enabling regulatory environment. And there are specific interventions that the regulator could undertake. So if we look at the industry as an ICT industry, essentially uh, I put forward the argument that if uh, the government were to take innovation seriously, uh, starting at the bottom of the pyramid with uh, skills and, and education would, would be a good uh, investment, uh, followed by investment in uh, applications and content, uh, end user devices, and then national broadband networks. Well, we're taking a look at the issue of regulation in South Africa, particularly for a business like Telcom. What are some of the challenges and restrictions that regulation has for your business in terms of how it hampers and restricts innovation? Well, Telcom's challenge in, in, in a few regards. Uh, first, we have the, the costs of, of the regulations. Being the incumbent, most of the, the remedies that facilitate competition in the market are speci specifically targeted at Telcom. Uh, we've had number portability, uh, carry selection, pre-selection regulations, facilities leasing regulations, and uh, even local loop unbundling is still on the agenda. Now, what makes it particularly difficult is while you have the uh, competitive threat on the one hand, as a national incumbent, you also have the social mandate to provide a, a basic universal voice service uh, across the country on the other side. And this puts a financial pressure on telecom to cross-subsidize our social obligations, uh, such as also pay phones and e-rate, in a competitive environment. Okay, and how's Telcom actually managing to sort of to work its way through some of these rather um, muddy sort of waters in terms of regulation and how the business goes forward? Well, essentially, when uh, the EC Act uh, created these new license categories that were technology neutral, it's Telcom's view that essentially that leveled the playing field. So Telcom lost uh, exclusive rights on, on uh, fixed telephony. And uh, however, we gain new rights, for example, uh, in signal distribution, such as uh, our infrastructure with regards to the World Cup, and also with regards to mobile services. So we have had new opportunities open to us, but we still face uh, substantial threats from, uh, for example, VoIP operators on our, our, on our fixed business. I know that your work in the regulatory affairs and public policy department, well, within Telcom South Africa, also includes a bit of a, a bit of foresight into some of the trends as well as some of the new frontiers or business opportunities that the business is going to be involved in. Can you talk me through some of those in terms of what Telcom will be looking into? Uh, that's correct. What we've seen uh, internationally is that broadband has arisen as the new standard in telecoms. People talk about universal broadband, broadband as a utility, you have municipal broadband networks, and, and that is clearly the, gl the global trend. However, what we see in this global trend is that the telecoms operators don't do it alone, that governments work with the telecoms operators, and in particular, that they invest substantial amounts of money in the rollout of these national broadband networks. And the question from country to country becomes, well, uh, what is the legal and regulatory structures that then govern the rollout of those national broadband networks?